Never mind, I won't be. But you, had, you had to sign off on it, Sigma, didn't you? Because you didn't know he was going to come back and be a significant oh, That's right. I, mean, I, I, I did a previous convention last year. I made, made a right fool of myself because someone said, Keith, do you think you would ever come back? And I said, no. <laughs> well, there, there's stories on his course, and I think that's the last we'll see of the Ud. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, but obviously, your, your Doctor Who career has spanned two particular arches, and uh, and the caves of Andrazani, it just won't go away, will it? It just keeps coming back and people keep telling you how wonderful it is. And in fact, they'd rather indelibly told you how wonderful it is. And then the poll last year, that must have been fantastic for you. It was... Uh, I, I, what? Because <laughs> I, 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 I should really tell you this, it all keeps saying it. I, do, I did watch it. When it won last year, I thought, oh, I must watch this again and just see. Because I always... See what the fuss is about. <laughs> 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 I, I just thought... I mean, by today's um, standards, it, it, I thought it was probably so creaky. I mean, I, I didn't. Uh, it was also one of my first efforts at directing, and uh, it was an opportunity for me to not show what I could do because there wasn't a lot of time to show anything. But to to actually, um, uh, to, I, I always knew what Doctor Who should be. Uh, it was it was dying at that period, and I knew it could be something else. It just needed a bit of love, a bit of care, the way it was looked at and shot. Um, and I had a fantastic group of artists, so I'm losing the track of what you asked. Um, th what happened was, when I looked at it again last year, um, I went, wow, you know, that's a pretty good story. It's a brilliant story. It was really well told. Um, they played brilliant with the actors, it's, and, and, and Peter was stunning in it, Peter Davis. Um, and I don't know why that hadn't happened as well as that before, but uh, you know, for him, but it was, a, it was, it worked out to be a, a terrific story. But I always thought, I never, I didn't know anything about this poll, but there's a Doctor Who story that, for me, um, and the Doctor's hardly in it, but it's a fantastic, it's the best story I think I've ever seen of Doctor Who, and I've seen them all, so there might be others that have been And it was um, Blink. I think Blink, for fear, terror, the, the actress who's now gone on to be a, uh, obviously a big Hollywood star, but I thought it was a brilliantly terrifying story, and, and absolutely what Doctor Who should be. And so, and it came very close to being number two, but it should have won, really, so there we are. Well, Charlie Brooker said, and, and a, a man whose opinion I admire, said that Blink wasn't only great Doctor Who, it was just great television. It actually is one of these, I suppose, from a Doctor Who, that's what you want, really, is, is a, an episode of Doctor Who that not only is good Doctor Who, but it just stands alone as a great piece of TV, you know? Yeah, I, I know that my parents, who hated Doctor Who because of my involvement as a kid, who were recording, <laughs> audio recording, and doing tea time, Shh. Just shut up. <laughs> and so obviously they never wanted to hear or see Doctor Who again, but they watched Blink and, and started to watch Doctor Who after that, because right. as I say, it was just a great job. Yeah. from start to finish. Mm. Yeah, it's very good. So is yours. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. but I'm talking about for pure fear yeah. and terror and hiding behind the sofa. Yeah. I, I mm. thought that was, um, had all the... So Caves, yeah. against that, Caves is a great adventure story, real boy's own stuff, and written by a great writer of his period, and he's now gone, but he, he was a great writer, and um, uh, I don't know, I was enthusiastic and gave it a kick up the backside, and, and suddenly we had a, a really, I didn't know it was going to turn out to be that hard, but here I am, like, what's 30 years or 25 years later, and it, it's not that it won't go away, I like the fact it doesn't go away, but it's, um, it doesn't really represent what I am now, I don't know, maybe I've got worse, I don't know. I wish they'd given the twin dilemma to do as well. Uh, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> But I remember, I remember distinctly as a kid watching Cubes of Anzani and uh, at that moment where Morgus turns to camera and does this very Shakespearean type soliloquy uh, and I was very blown away by that thinking that is absolutely magnificent but <laughs> it's a slightly different way to pan out in reality wasn't it? <laughs> it, was a, it was just a mistake. <laughs> uh, it was, well I, I've, yeah, I've told you many times. Um, what happened was it was about two minutes to ten on this particular recording day or night. Uh, and in those days, the BBC used to rehearse. We used to rehearse during the day and then, I think, record from half past seven to half past ten, one of those kind of... Anyway, there was like two minutes to go, to ten to two minutes to ten. Um, and they were going to... In those days, they also, the sparks pulled the plug. If <laughs> ten o'clock, that's it. If you haven't finished, tough. Um, and I said to the floor manager, I'd like to do this scene again. We say to John um, Normington, who played Morgs, um, so when he does this, uh, when he, once he's finished this discussion with the videogram or hologram or whatever, I want him to turn and turn aside away from camera. And 
There was a couple of people that had And someone said, right, okay, Tara, and action. And uh, uh, the scene was started. And at the moment, <laughs> we got to this moment where he's supposed to just turn away and do a little aside. He looked straight to the lens. And I went, oh, flipping out. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and there was a big groan from everybody in the gallery because, because we spend hours asking actors, not actors, but asking kids, young child actors, not to look into the lens ever because it, it takes you out, it brings us right back to um, reality. Um, and here I was, he, it's too late, about two seconds to ten, uh, and that's a wrap everybody, and I had to live with this thing. So I said to John, what do I do? I mean, that's, uh, he said, well, you've got about ten more of those. There's about five other times this happens. And I, he said, so what I would do is, that's a terrible mistake. Just live with it and do it every time uh, and see what happens. Well, of course, it, it, that's what happened. That's how it, it, we, we then kind of made a virtue of the thing. But at a convention about a year later, I was asked exactly the same question. You know, what made you have this wonderful idea of this man looking straight at the lens? And I said, it was pure accident. I told the story I've just said. And John was sitting next to me, John Nathan Turner. And he kicked me in the shins and said, you're not supposed to bloody say that. Pretend it's great. <laughs> Brilliant director. <laughs> a lot of the good things that happen, though, are, they are, I promise you, and most directors will say, are purely by accident. Uh, yeah. There are some great moments in film and television that have happened just by pure luck. Well, yeah, but the, the genius is the same to stick with, stick with it and to go with it. And that's, that's the difference. That, that was John, who, um, oh, well, you know, that's what you can do, isn't it? Um, but we did, and, yeah. and in the end, uh, it became an iconic moments. Yeah. I think I wanted to take you back now to a very short clip from, uh, of you directing. Because you've done so many icons, you've done Dalek, Sidemen, and you did a regeneration as well. And we have a little clip here of you uh, uh, from, from one of the DVDs <laughs> directing the regeneration. <laughs> Is this death? Okay, number six is repositioning. Alright. Well, good at the end. Alright, back in position, please, and we'll take it from one more time then, please. Peter, the hand down by the side, please. Thank you. Yes, have you say the last line? Put your hand down, okay? That's lovely. It's about four weeks ago. It's gone on ridiculous. Okay. Where from? Same place. All right, Graham. 173D, take three. All right, Nicola, can you go up stage rather than to the left? Um, can I move the file then? Don't worry about the file, I'm just going to do it. Okay, right, fine. Okay, here we go then. Well, <laughs> well you say, come back, silly bitch, don't go down that. I'd say, can't we see if we're running out of time? Oh, Doctor, there must be something I can do. Tell me. Too late. Going soon. Time to say goodbye, Perry. Oh, no. Don't give up. You can't leave me now. I might regenerate. I don't know. What was Peter like? Was he, was he a monster on this scene? No, it was a scene, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know quite why I'm taking that shot, because all we've got is the top of someone's head. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, uh, there must have been just that moment right at the end when she does look like... Yeah, yeah. that's more like it. I want it on six, all this stuff. We put Colin back exactly as Peter was. We'll line up, we've got a frozen shot up there. We can sort of get a rough position that will be almost correct. And what happens is we hold it for about 30 seconds on Colin, just benignly lying there. We <laughs> cue it. Colin will sit He's up. He's talking too much. Erect. Should we love that? Sits up erect. Jeff, he sits up erect. And as he sits up erect, you've got to go shoo, straight down into that deep two shot. She'll come scrubbing forward and you tighten to a close two shot. I wonder what she's thinking. 